Welcome and hello. This is a video tutorial in HECRAS. And in this lesson, we're going to be dealing with steady flow analysis, specifically looking at simulation options for steady flow. All right, what I have on the screen here is actually the HECRAS user's manual. I oftentimes refer to the user's manual. And these are the simulation options we're going to be discussing in this lesson. So I will leave a link to this page in the description. What it will do is it'll actually take you to a performing steady flow analysis page. But if you scroll down here to simulation options, or you can just click simulation options here on the, the right panel, if the, the browser is wide enough. Okay, there it is. And then we're going to start with the simulation options discussion right here. All right. So what I have on the screen is heck Raz, And I've got my I have lesson 31 a few times labeled here. I got my number mixed up. This is going to be lesson 22 B. But so just ignore the, the 31 reference. What we're going to do here is click on run steady flow analysis and then investigate the different options here in this options menu from encroachments all the way down to view runtime messages file. All right. So without further ado, let's get started. Options. The first one here is encroachments. Encroachments refer to restrictions or reductions in the available flow area in a river or channel cross section. These are not considered permanent geometry, and that's why they reside in plan data, not in the geometric data. The first thing to mention about encroachments is that you can't create an encroachment on your first profile. The only profile you can um, create encroachments for are for your non first profiles. So right now I have three profiles listed. Let me go back and actually show you the data. So here's the view slash edit steady flow data. I've got three profiles each at 50,000 CFS. But if I change this back to a one, and now I only have one profile, I save that flow data. Now if I go back to the steady flow analysis, options encroachments, I get this error message that basically says I can't use encroachments for the very first profile. So there's no profile to select from this drop down. All right, let me go back and make that change. So I have multiple profiles here, which we'll just stick with 50,000. Okay, that looks good. And I'll save it, close it, and then back to encroachments. All right, so I can select profile two or profile three. The reason for this is profile one is assumed to be like a base profile that's used for comparison with other profiles that do have encroachments. So some of the data inputs on this encroachments page are um, as follows. We first have equal conveyance reduction. So if this checkbox is checked. HECRAS will attempt to provide an equal loss of conveyance on both sides of the stream or the channel. This is not the default value here. I think it's zero, but I just went ahead and typed in 10. So this means if the left bank offset is 10, 10 feet, HECRAS will limit the encroachment 10 feet from the left bank station. Also, I would go ahead and specify the river and the reach. You can only add encroachment data for one reach at a time. And then I would specify the upstream and downstream river stations. So for instance, if I want encroachments from river station 2000 down to 1000 between these two cross sections here, I would go ahead and make this selection. And then we already talked about the profile. So I'm making edits to profile two, not one, not three. After that, we have method. So we'll select the method one, two, three, four, five. For this lesson, I'm not going to go too in depth on encroachments. In fact, there I will leave a link in the description to the main page right here, but also to this performing flood plain encroachments analysis. This talks a lot more about encroachments and the analysis, and there's uh, multiple pages of data. But right down here, if you scroll down halfway, it tells you the different methods one through five and what data is required. So that refers to the five different methods here. And if you select a method like method one, then the two fields down below here indicate to the user what data they need to provide. So if I said the left and right station for that encroachment, then that's what I would type in there. If I select a different method, then I would have different data. So fixed top width is a certain width. That's method two, where the user enters the fixed top width, as opposed to the left and right encroachment stations. All right, so that's how that works. Again, not going to go into in-depth detail on encroachments, but just wanted to mention this is one of the options for steady flow analysis. We're not quite done yet. Uh, another button that's important here is to set the selected range. So you can go ahead and type data in directly into these fields, or you can click the set selected range, and that's going to automatically populate. Oh, whoops. 
me go back to the one method one here set selected range okay good that updates the table down here if you want to delete the table you can do so manually or you can click the clear profile button or clear all profile buttons so i'll do that here's a delete confirmation and boom the data is gone okay so that's it for encroachments uh, next up for our options is conveyance calculations so here we have two different options either at breaks and end values only or between every coordinate point hack two style the default is at n value breaks only so the area and the wetted perimeter would be calculated at just the breaks in the mannings n values and then sum together and then the second option here is a little bit more robust these two values could give slightly different answers though just based on their calculations okay and then the next option down here is friction slope method here we have to select between six different radio buttons the first five are distinct friction slope methods. And then the last radio button here is basically the user telling HECRAS to decide for the user. The default value for steady flows, this first one, which is average conveyance. And the third link in the description of this video will take you to a page that I found, which describes what are these different methods and what are the equations for them. For instance, average conveyance, average friction slope, geometric mean, and so on. So check out that uh, third link if you're interested in these equations. All right, next option down we have is set calculation tolerances. This option allows the user to override the default settings of the calculation tolerances. So what that means is uh, you have a bunch of default values here for different tolerances and iteration count and so on. But the user can go ahead and change these values as long as it remains within the range specified here in this label. So water surface calculation tolerance between 0 0.0001 feet and 0 0.1 feet. The default is 0 0.01 feet. When the difference between the computed and assumed water surface is less than this tolerance, then HackRAS assumes that it has reached valid solution. Otherwise, it would continue to iterate. Similar with the critical depth calculation, if the error between the assumed and calculated is less than the user specified tolerance, then HECRAS assumes it's a valid solution. Otherwise, it would iterate again over and over until either a valid solution has been reached for these two stopping criteria, or the maximum number of iterations has been hit. So the range here is between three and 40, it says the default value is 20. Next is this maximum difference tolerance, and that's between 0.1 and 1, and that's in feet. That's uh, specifically larger than the individual tolerances. If the maximum number of iterations is hit, so 20, for instance, and these tolerance values are still not met or not satisfied, then the minimum error solution out of the 20 different iterations or all the iterations that were tried is compared with the maximum difference tolerance, this value right here, 0.3. If the minimum error solution found in the iterations is less than this maximum difference tolerance, then HECRAS will return that minimum error solution with a warning. Otherwise, HECRAS defaults the solution to critical depth. The next one down is flow tolerance factor, and you can see the range there. This one is only used for bridges and culverts, and it's used to balance weir flow through the structure. Okay, and the last three deal with split flow. The maximum iteration in split flow uh, ranges from 3 to 100. This variable defines the maximum number of iterations that the program will use during the split flow optimization calculations. Flow tolerance factor in weir split flow. This tolerance is used when running a split flow optimization with a lateral weir or gated spillway. And then finally, the max difference in junction split flow. Here, the uh, default value is 0 0.02 feet. This tolerance is used during a split flow optimization at a stream junction. Okay, so a lot of reading there, but th those are the definitions. And again, the user's manual is linked in the first link of the video description. All right, next option here is the critical depth output option and the critical depth computation method. I think these two could really be grouped together and you'll see why. So basically, critical depth output option, it's just a checkbox, check on or off if you wanna calculate the critical depth at all time steps and at all locations. The next one down is critical depth computation method. So here it's just asking you 
what method to use to calculate that critical depth, either multiple critical depth search or the default, it says faster parabolic method. The next option down is flow optimizations. This allows the program to optimize the flow at split locations. Some of those split locations could be junctions, lateral structures, reach storage areas, and pumps. So right now I do have a lateral structure in my model right here at River Station 800. That's where it says here, lateral structure. And then you can just check this checkbox on or off. The way this works is HECRAS will first assume that there's no flow through the lateral structure and it'll compute the energy grade line and water surface profile and all that in the main channel. Then using that water surface elevation, it will compute the flow through the lateral structure and then iteratively subtract that lateral structure flow from the main channel flow over and over until a balance is reached between the main channel and that lateral structure. This optimization checkbox is also available in the lateral structure dialog box. So here is that lateral structure. If I click optimization, here is the che same checkbox. So if I uncheck it here, click OK, study flow options, flow optimization, see it's unchecked. But you can access this dialog box in two different ways. All right. We have just a few options left here. There's check data before execution. So that is just a check mark on or off. I'll leave it checked on. When it's checked on, what happens is when the user clicks compute, it doesn't actually compute first. It runs an additional check to make sure that all the required data for that compute is valid. And if it's not, if there's some sort of problems, it won't even try to execute. It will simply provide a message of what the errors are. Otherwise, it'll just check. If the check passes, then it will run the compute. The next option here is to set log file output level. So what this means is you have a log file during the compute that writes out and zero represents zero output. 10 is the maximum, I believe. Yeah, that represents 10 output. That's the maximum output. So there's a global log level right here. There's also a log level down here, zero through 10. By default, they're just set to zero. And I would say you should probably leave them at zero unless there's some sort of problem during the compute that you can't figure out. Then I would increase this value to maybe three or four or five. It's probably better to focus on just a specific log level location. So you'd set the river, you'd set the reach, and then you'd sec select the upstream downstream location. Let's just go ahead and do that and then select the log level of three and then click this set selected range and then it adds that data down here to this uh, list box. All right, so next time the simulation is run, we'll see that log data. If you have no idea where the problem is in your model, then you may want to use the global log level. The user manual also mentions that setting a value of four or five for your log level could be too much. So you know that six through 10 is probably way too much, but you may need that level of detail, at least if you have it isolated to a specific location. Okay, so I'm gonna clear all, then click okay. Next option is to view the log file. So right now I don't have a log file. It tells me to set the value of the log level greater to zero, run the simulation, and then come back and check it out. So let's go ahead and do that. I'll go to options, set log file output level. I'll just go global, I'll set it to one click OK. I'll run the compute. OK, and then I'll click close and then options view log file. Now we have some data right here. So this is again for lesson 22B. Don't mind that. But let's check out the project directory. And sure enough, we have a log file right here. I believe we can just open this up. Yep. In a text editor. And here is the same data. Again, this is global level one for a very simple model. OK, so I'm going to close all that up. I think we're almost done here. View runtime messages. What this is, is just the runtime messages we saw during the compute. So fairly uneventful for my compute. But if you wanted to see the runtime messages for the last save compute, you can go ahead and uh, go ahead and look at the data that way. All right. Well, that was it for this lesson. We talked about steady flow analysis, simulation options, everything from encroachment down to the view runtime messages file in HECRAS.